I'm Chad Gravelese with Aerolite TV and your host of the show, Connect Up. If you're looking to gain traction in your career or business, you're at the right place because here we talk about connection. You need to know how to connect with the right people in the right way so you can build valuable relationships that lead you to career success. We have conversations about how to find your voice in your career. I interview communication experts, time and focus masters, and everyday people who have stories to tell of challenges overcome, goals achieved, and how their inner and outer communication and ultimately their relationships accelerated their progress and elevated their journey. Success in life is just a collection of the right conversations with yourself and others. Connect up to a better version of yourself. Connect up to your goals and a brighter future. Disconnect from the things that are holding you back and connect your way to where you want to be. Welcome back to Connect Up. Today I get to speak with Jen Narragon. She is a strategic connector. So perfect for the show because she's gonna teach us all about how to connect with people more authentically and also how to connect better with ourself through getting a grip on that internal conversation that tends to sabotage us. And we are going to talk about how to not compare and how to uh, just become so comfortable with the type of connection that's gonna build our careers. Jen has spent many years trying to help people find the right job, the right investor, the right opportunity that they're after in their career or business. And she's gonna discuss with us today some key tips for networking and for creating authentic connections with the right people in the right way and how to not discount people that we may think won't provide value to us and to just be open to connecting with anyone because truly that will lead you to where you wanna be. And we talk a little bit about safety and how that internal voice that we have in our head tries to keep us safe, so we need to be grateful for it, but sometimes it thinks that our goals are unsafe, so then we sabotage ourselves achieving something that we want or getting the right job. And so we're gonna discuss a little bit about, about how to interrupt um, that, that talk that can sabotage the wrong things and how to balance that out. And so you're gonna learn a lot today about how to simplify the process of communication and the process of networking so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Uh, we really do get into talking about just how to be human and how that the fact that it's okay that we're not perfect. And if any of you have not already, go to airlight.tv and go to the bottom of the page and enter in your name and email to join the free video masterclass I've created called The Solopreneur Journey. And with that masterclass, you'll learn some key steps for how to set a foundation to find success as a solopreneur. So with that said, I welcome Jen to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you here because you, uh, you have a lot of knowledge on networking, communication, relationships, and we talk about that extensively on this show and we talk about how to build our careers uh, with our voice really, being able to just connect with people and through that we can find uh, success meaning a fulfilling career, you know, if that means a certain amount of money as well, that's okay but also just having fulfillment in our careers. And can you tell us a little bit about what you do as a strategic connector and kind of the why behind that? So as a strategic connector, yeah, it's, I haven't, I didn't know that connecting isn't everybody's superpower because I'm just born with that like desire or that gift to be able to meet somebody and instantly my brain starts to go, oh, you need to know this person and this person. And if you meet this person, your business is going to explode. It's just something that it's more like an energetic thing. And I only started learning that that's a gift and not everybody has built that way in the past couple of years. And so as a coach with my training, I sort of saw this little spot where I could bring in that gift and connect it to, to what I'm doing and how I'm working with clients. And my why really is because I genuinely love people and I'm really curious about people. And so it's just fun for me. And I don't think work should be hard or not fun. So yeah, definitely. Have you always been that way? Have you always been curious about people and just been somebody who is kind of more naturally being able to connect with people? Yes, for sure. And I think 
even deeper than that, I'm always the person that, I think one of the, the, the biggest quotes that I've heard over and over this past year is, I've never said that to anybody before because I'd like to get into conversations that are deeper and maybe talk about the things that most people wouldn't just because of my fascination with humans. And um, I remember in training one time I was, I was with my company and one of the guys started having like a physical reaction and he was shaking and our trainer was curious with him like, Hey, what's going on over there? And he's like, I'm just really nervous. And she looks at him and she's like, so what? Who cares? Like you're a human. And so from that experience and having been immersed in that, I just, I love humanity and the fact that we are at times trembling or nervous or all the different feels. So this sort of comes along with loving people. I like that story. I like how she just, uh, just said it how it was regarding like, so what? Like, we all get nervous. We all experience anxiety. I think sometimes we we really do kind of blow it out of proportion when we experience these negative things. We think we're the only ones. And, uh, and that's why we're so nervous because we're afraid of what other people are thinking of us. Like, oh, look at him. Why He's so nervous. It, like, no, they're thinking, oh, I've been nervous before. I mean, like literally, it's we really get it in our head that everyone is is judging us for being human. <laughs> I could talk about this for 9 million years. I actually have a blog post about it. And in, on my website, there's a page that's a little bit inappropriate, but it's a movement that really actually speaks to this conversation where it's like, you know, being a networker, I'm on the board of directors for National Association of Women Business Owners as their corporate partner chair. And so you can imagine that the people that I work with, you know, it's a high caliber of people. I think all people are high caliber, but this particular role, you're in, you know, you're at a country club and everybody's dressed up and they're looking their best. And so it can be really confronting and, and energetically being around that many people naturally, you know, I've gotten shaky before and been in conversations where I've said, I've spoken to it, like, my gosh, I'm like, you know, like triggered right now. And the whole philosophy for me behind it is that we are incredibly human and we've been like taught to sort of stifle these emotions and it's silly because we all have them and it's like totally normal to feel these things that are uncomfortable. It's just if we start opening up a bigger conversation about that's okay. So what? Like, so what? Yeah. We're all thinking about ourselves more than we are the other person and judging the other person. Yeah. For me, I, uh, I was never natural at uh, connecting with people at socializing at communicating um, I was the quiet one all growing up and I had a hard time when I was starting to uh, build my business. I built a, a freelance videography business and then I moved into doing consulting with video and then moving into coaching and kind of doing all of it. Uh, and I struggled a lot with my career for a few years because I could get away with not knowing how to communicate, you know, as a kid. Uh, it, it caused me pain but it didn't cost me money <laughs> and it didn't cost me being able to support my family until I, you know, so it really hit home when I had a family to support and I needed this skill. I'm like, this is a skill. I'm not broken because I don't know how to communicate. I just need to gain this skill. I was never taught it. I think just part of my personality was maybe more vulnerable to not having that skill either, but it was a skill that anyone could develop and I could develop it. And I got to a point where I had to go and find help. And when I, when I found mentors and coaches to help me learn how to communicate, um, at first, my first reaction to it was I started going out and I was almost overly conscious of my communication where I was still thinking about myself, where I was implementing these communication skills, but I was still so outside of myself. It's like I was in conversation with people and I felt like I was observing myself communicating and I'm like okay am I doing the right body language am I am I uh you know am I trying to am I controlling my tone of voice correctly and I was overly analyzing myself and that wasn't working either I almost went too far in the other direction and then I finally got to a play I finally got like I think I was reading a book and uh it and, and it struck me when it uh if, um the phrase in it was uh, actually, it was called, the book was called Just Listen. I don't know if you've ever read it. And it had to do with uh, something he said in it was uh, just listen. Like if you want to be a good talker, listen. 
And that really struck a chord with me because uh, I always thought that in order to, I always felt jealous of those that were really good at talking. And I thought that I then had to learn how to really be good at talking. And I got it wrong. I didn't realize that in order to know how to talk, I needed to actually listen. That I was never actually a good listener, even though I was quiet. Because I was constantly in my own head analyzing what I was going to say. And, uh, and when I finally just took that to heart of just listen, I started to naturally know what to say. And I was able to get away from that place of overanalyzing myself. Do you want to comment a little bit on that or any experiences you've had or people you've worked with regarding that phenomena of like just looking at ourselves as a third person and being overly conscious of our communication? Like where's the balance in that, you know, being able to utilize the skill of communication but not be so conscious of it that you're not connecting to the person. Um, like, you totally uh, hit on a couple of things that I think are really powerful. And number one, I'm going to say I would be willing to bet that your gift, like you're, when you were younger, you probably had a really great gift of being a listener, which is huge. And, and you totally got it spot on. It's, I think it's why I'm a natural connector is because I am so curious about people. And so I spend a lot of time in conversation, asking questions, just getting to know people. And it's a perfect fit. It's probably why I'm a connector is because I do a lot of the top, the asking and, um, they get to talk and share and, and that feels good, right? When people ask about us and we get to feel seen. I think that's what all human beings want is just to, to feel seen. So for you, there that was a huge gift, like being able to just be an observer, a quiet observer. Yeah, and uh, but I didn't see it like that. And, uh, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's like it's sometimes we, uh, we perceive kind of parts of who we are as being uh, something wrong with it. And yes, I did have a legitimate skill I needed to learn, but um, it, it, yeah, it's almost like I went full circle where maybe I started out with being a good listener and observer. But then as I started to get self-conscious of the way that people would talk about, you know, my shyness and everything else, that I ended up becoming even not that good of a listener because then I started getting in my own head of like, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And then I came full circle again of finally realizing, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess I felt authentic again. And that's where I want to kind of take this conversation next is how do you be authentic? Um, how can you be authentic in your communication? Because for me, at first, when I started learning how to communicate, I was being very not authentic. And I was uh, just kind of putting on the front of communication, but I wasn't myself. And then I finally was able to take a full circle of just not trying to be perfect with my communication for one, being human, coming back to what we talked, started the conversation with, uh, but also knowing how to connect at the same time. Yeah, what do you have to say about that with authenticity and communication? And I would say I've been in the self-help world for 20 years or so now. I started when I was in my early 20s and I fell in love with it so hardcore because it was the first place where I learned I'm not a piece of crap. I'm actually kind of a cool person and worthy of love and all of these things. And even in my training as a coach, that that was all the time was spent on us learning that we're actually really powerful and we're really capable. And it's it, I guess you compare it to your ego versus your essence or your um, your highest self versus like your survival mechanism that voice in our head that's like constantly naggy trying to keep us safe and small and like protected and distance from others. But when we're in our highest state of being or connected to our essence, the essence of who we really are, that's the place where we can really be authentic. And it's like years of just learning that it's okay to be me and I don't have to compare myself to other people. It's really easy to do when you start to listen to people's podcasts and you see their cult following and there's this whole influencer community and all of these things, but it's just the constant reminder that we are enough just as we are. My coach always said to me when I was feeling really crappy, she like her, my favorite quote of hers was Jen, you are not broken. There is nothing to fix. You are perfect, whole and complete just as you are. There's nothing broken, only someone to love. And for me, that was the permission. Like, okay, I'm not broken. Somebody sees that I'm whole and complete just like this. Um, so I would say that I sort of connected to that. And, and I think that authenticity comes to me just because probably 20 years of self-help will do that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like 
if we all just like stood back and could really see ourselves for who we are, it's pretty magical. And and the permission to be, again, incredibly human, just like whether you show up the lowest person on the totem pole or whether you show up and you're super tripping over your words or whatever it is, it's just the reminder that, you know, you're, you're, we aren't broken. Hmm. That's true. Yeah. Just being incredibly human is how to be authentic, that we allow ourselves to not be perfect in things that we're constantly improving ourselves, but we are human and authentic in the fact that, uh, yeah, like for me, I was trying to be perfect with everything. I was trying to be perfect with my communication. And so I wasn't authentic. And, um, that really helps us. Um, let's, I want to talk a little bit about what, what are maybe some networking tips you have for us, just some actionable tips as far as, uh, relative to, uh, building up a career, that type of kind of networking, what are some things that can help us if we're um, to make valuable connections that will help grow our business or grow our career? Uh, to me, I think it's really important, first of all, that you find what you're passionate about. And if you don't know what you're passionate about, you try different things. But there's 900 million ways to network right now. It's just unreal. There's BNI, there's Navo, there's Schaefer, there's LinkedIn, there's social media. I mean, there's literally like 1,458,000 trillion ways that you can network. So one, what are you passionate about? What is something that doesn't feel like work? For me, I think my next chapter for networking is going to be like the succulent club because I love gardening. Um, so I would think that if I didn't have Navo and um, we met through Shaper, I think Shaper is like the most amazing tool ever. Um, it's also, I don't, okay, here's, here's my number one total tip, especially in the age of influencers. I think people think that, um, they, we discount each other. So the person at the grocery store, you might think like, ah, he's just some schmuck that works at the grocery store. No, like I, I look at every single person that I meet as somebody that's incredibly valuable. And how many, how many like famous, like amazing people that are held in very high regard. Do you hear that have stories of, you know, the days that they were scrubbing the floors at like their janitorial job. It's like really looking at every single person in your life as though they are a meaningful and important person in your life because you never know who's who in life and what their background is or who their connections are. And it's not to say it in like a user, like a using way, but it's just, really looking at people, all of them, as though they're important and powerful. And I think that even the people in your own life, my, my number one saying is um, you already probably know who it is that you need to know. And if you don't know them, you'll know somebody that does know them. So find what you're passionate about. Look to the people that are already in your network. And um, I build my network basically by getting on the phone like every single day. I literally... I'm like a, an eighth grade junior high girl where I love to just talk on the phone. And so I, I will sit there and just, you know, schedule calls and um, build relationships that way. And again, I think it's just really finding what you're passionate about and building on that. That's, that's, that's a really good idea because I suffered with that where when I was starting to make networking a priority, I thought, okay, for me to get here, I need to meet these high up people and I need to somehow figure out how to network with this uh, really big successful entrepreneur. And you're totally right that it, it, we, we often overlook the cashier at the grocery store that could literally connect us to where we need to be to our career goal. Like we overlook those the, the, that everyone has significance and that we can't see, oh, that successful business owner right there is more important than my neighbor and it's more important than the guy just walked by on the street that if we're just open to connecting to anyone and not judging them based on maybe what their career uh, is or, or where they are with that, that we will be able to connect our way to our career goals in some weirdly magical way where you look back and you're like, whoa, somehow that person connected me to that. And that's how I ended up, man, if I never talked to him, I never would have that's that's really great. I'm, gl I'm glad you. And it's amazing that too, you know. I having built up a a crazy global network. Um, I know some pretty like some people that your eyes would go like whoa, 
and it's interesting because I see people as all the same. It's like, would I get starstruck if somebody like Fiona Apple was sitting next to me? Of course, like she's amazing. But, but I look to people as though they're all the same and um, countless numbers of time I've seen people when somebody in the room and their whole demeanor changes and it just goes like like super googly eye and you're like they're just they're just people and perhaps they started working at the grocery store just like John at the supermarket so mm -hmm. definitely that's that's a really good perspective to have thanks for bringing that up um, let's go inward a little bit uh, how do we get a grip on that negative talk with ourselves uh, because we we talk to other people and for me, the biggest reason why I, I had struggles talking to other people is because the way of t I was talking to myself. So we have all these conversations going on in our head. Do you want to comment a little bit on what that is in there, how we can get in control of it? Yes, please. This is, this is, <laughs> so there are thousands of coaches out there and um, a very small percentage of coaches are ontological coaches, which people are like, are you a cancer coach? No, I'm not a cancer coach. I'm a being based coach. And in, in my training, we focus solely on this. Um, so that voice in my world is called your survival mechanism. It's that part of you that was born anywhere from the age of one to seven, or shaped, I should say, from the age of one to seven, based on the programming that you, um, the programming, your, you know, your culture, all these different things that shaped you. And through the years, through programming and, um, television, marketing, and all these different things are just stacked on top of one another that we just start to listen to this nasty voice. That voice also keeps you protected. So it's the voice that's going to tell you not to jump out of an airplane to go skydiving, but it's the voice that tries to keep you safe and alive. And so being a being-based coach, this is exactly what I 100% focus on with my clients is that the days when you wake up and you have that black, dark, looming cloud where your voice is like in super high gear telling you that you're not good enough or keeping you super stuck or, you know, keeping you from doing the things that you love, that can be um, almost like put on the shelf, loved, you know, that part of us, we still love that part of ourselves, but we want to have more days where we're coming from our highest self or the essence of who we really are. And, the ways that we do that, it's called getting back to being. And it's a, a mix of things, but really the foundation of it, I would say, is self-care. Do so you know, generally, if you're operating on little sleep and you're busy, 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 and your diet then goes to crap and you're not working out because you're so busy, that means that you're, um, you have really no self-care practice. And on the days when we feel really good or really excited or really happy, most of the time those are days when we're, you know, getting rest, we're exercising, we're doing all the things to take care of ourselves. So I like to, you know, have like a database of things that I know that will get me back into the, my essence or my, like connected to my highest self where that voice is a lot quieter and less mean. And for me, definitely running, um, running is huge for me. It's, it's, it's gardening. I mean, baking for people it's it's really individual and personal but i would say that's the the main thing so really just kind of spending time with yourself and given it sounds like that those types of activities help you to connect with yourself because if you're connected with yourself better then you can connect with other people better which then leads you to connect to whatever it is you're trying to connect to um because yeah for me as well i've noticed that like on the days that i don't stick to my routine i don't uh, you know, I was sleeping or I don't take care of myself. I don't do my exercises. I don't, you know, journal and get things out of my head. Um, tend to be the days where things don't go as well. And I end up, you know, mood shifting a lot more. Um, and so that's, that's a really great way to simplify it that we, there's so many different ways that we can talk about the way, the talk that we have in our head, but just reducing it down to, Hey, it's a survival mechanism. And I think as well, you got me thinking that, if that voice in there is a survival mechanism and it's telling us not to jump out of this moving car, it's also telling us not to pursue that job that is out of our comfort zone, right? Because then we think, oh, that might be unsafe. And I never thought of about it that like that before where it's if it's simply just seeing things as safe or unsafe, if we have a goal we've never achieved before, 
that could feel unsafe to us and we perceive it as almost scary. Do you think that that maybe is where some of that self-sabotage comes, that we're just trying to keep ourselves safe? Like it's almost survival? A hundred percent is where it comes from. And, you know, we always say that living outside of your comfort zone is where possibility lives because it's, it's like you said, it's like going for, I, I see it a lot with people in money, especially like, and really a lot with women and money and self-worth. It's like, you know, you're going to set your rates to something really high and it becomes like a really fearful thing that's attached to your self-worth. For example, or if you're going for a really high level job, of course you're fearful and that's probably driving up your, your, you know, you're operating under these certain contexts of unworthy, unlovable, right, wrong. Um, so yeah, it's completely, it's, this is why people are so fascinating to me. You know, it's just like learning that we all have this thing. We all have it. And we, some days are more of a struggle than others, but it's just the, the reminder that you're just as human as I am and you're struggling with the same things. And, um, I think that being in the world of self-help, I, I loved it so much because what you saw on the exterior from of most people did not reflect what they were feeling inside about themselves. And you see these people that are earning, you know, have millions of dollars and then you get to know them and you learn that they are walking around like hating themselves mm. or, you know, they, they seem like they have the life on the outside, but inside they're just dying and crumbling. Yeah. It's true because we tie our happiness to so many weird things. And I've had plenty of experience just, just recently. I've noticed things I'm like, man, I'm tying my happiness to certain uh, either stuff or life. It's okay to pursue those things. Like, hey, I'd love to have a bigger house one day. I'd love to have this. But when we tie our happiness to it, it messes things up because then it's like these things that don't really matter uh, as far as like, like our, at the end of the day, our relationships, what we know, our wisdom, all of those things is where the value is and all these other things can help us enjoy life in various ways but when we literally tie our happiness to it then we end up becoming a millionaire and guess what <laughs> we're still unhappy because we're not really actually figuring out okay well what did it what it, you know what is it that actually is going to make me happy i i totally don't want to step over what you were talking about which i think is really 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 important and i work with clients all day about this is that you know they hire me because they want to get to from point A to point Z. And so you, generally most people hire a coach because they really want to elevate their ceiling and they set, they're setting out to do really big things. And that's great. I love aligning with people to do that, but I'm always really, really like my, I'm a stickler on being present and really just honoring where you are right now. And it's like health. I mean, you just take that, that is tremendous wealth right there. People are so focused on getting that you know, multi-million, billion, trillion, whatever dollar um, deal or getting the house or getting the things. And it's like, we spend so much of our time just looking for the next thing that we forget about what we have right here and right now. Even having healthy kids is like mega wealth, you know, just being, I, I feel like being born in this country is like mega wealth. Go, go to India or some third world country and really get it into perspective. Yeah, I've definitely uh, struggled with that where I, I started getting really focused on my goals and my future and where I was heading. I noticed that I started getting very ungrateful for where I was at and, and what I had. And I started, it almost had like this reverse effect where all the personal development I was doing was kind of whipping back around and making me complain a lot about my current uh state and and current lifestyle and everything else i'm like that's not good i need to figure out how to be grateful for where i'm at and i'm still figuring that out i'm like uh, I, what what like do you have any tips regarding like how how do you be grateful for where you're at but at the same time still have a forward thinking momentum where you're 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 looking to the next thing but you're not living there so much that yeah, you can't be present. Like that that's hard sometimes, but we don't need to complicate it other than just first of all, having the awareness is huge. The reminder of like, oh, okay, wait, I do have this roof over my head and food in my refrigerator and my kids are all safe and I even even when things crumble, it's like there's there's lessons in all of it. And I can tell you, for example, when the market tanked back in oh oh eight, oh 
whatever year tank. I was a homeowner at the time, and we met with a, a realtor who was like, "Yeah, it, it's crashing, it's crashing hard. You need to get out of this house." And so we had to do a short sale, which resulted in a move to Hawaii. You know, so it's like we could have looked at that situation as like, "Crap, the market's tanking. We're in total trouble. We have to, you know, do a short sale. It's going to ruin our credit and all these things." But ultimately, it resulted in a move to Hawaii. So mm -hmm. it's like even even when things don't seem like they're great, there's always something better on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, yep. That's, that sums up uh, most of my life is immediately thinking, oh crap, this is not good. And then later on realizing, wow, this, there's always this good that comes out of it. And so it's good to, yeah, just make that choice to notice the roof, the roof above your head. That's, that's a good tip right there. <laughs> the other piece that I have for you that, I have for most human beings, it's very simple, but the word integrity and use like being, having integrity with your word, with your actions. I mean, even something as simple as driving the speed limit, that's if you're speeding, that's out of integrity, really. Um, it's a huge word to notice, or a huge area to notice in your life when things aren't working. Where are you out of integrity? Like, are you late on bills? Are you um, not committing to your word? And and it's so sneaky just how little things can add up and turn into behaviors that are just, you know, like all of a sudden you're in mountains of debt or whatever the thing is that you're struggling with. But it really just starts with the simple foundation of having integrity everywhere and doing, you know, some sort of audit, um, whether that's working with coach or you know, having some sort of practice where you're really looking at your life through that like micro lens because I had one, one call with my coach and I was really stressed about money and um, brought everything to her. And she's, she asked me, she's like, so where are you out of integrity with money? And I was like, huh, me? Like, what are you talking about? And when I stopped to look at it, I was like, oh, I'm late with this bill and I didn't put this check in the, whatever. I'm, I'm not looking at the bank, like, whatever the things were and I noticed and so just that noticing and making those shifts and getting back into into integrity were the things was the thing that had me shift and have my breakthrough definitely thanks for sharing that that uh that's really valuable to remember that's a really great way to to evaluate what could be off oh what am I out of integrity in right now um that could be throwing off the balance of things in my life that's that's really valuable. You shared a lot of valuable things with us today regarding our inner and outer communication, which are equally important. And I want um, our viewers and listeners to know where they can connect with you. How can we learn more from you? Yeah, so jennifernaragon.com is my website. And um, I'm just kind of expecting, declaring that 2019 is gonna be the best year ever. And so if they wanna connect with me there, um, my email address is info at jennifernaragon.com and that's Jennifer with one N. Um, yeah, I'd love to connect with them. And Perfect. Well, um, I'm with you on that, that 2019 is going to be the best year ever. And I hope that anyone listening can declare that to themselves as well and join that train because it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun year. So thank you so much, Jen, for coming on our show today. Thanks, Chad. This is super fun.